It's amazingly ironic. The head of NASA who once didn't take SpaceX seriously is now complaining that people aren't taking SpaceX seriously. NASA Administrator Bill Nelson has just commended SpaceX on its rise within the space industry after years of being poo-pooed by critics. I think the private space industry is extremely beneficial. Just look at what SpaceX has already accomplished. So has Nelson lost his mind? By contrast, he is actually more sober than most. After all, it looks like Bill Nelson is finally putting his prejudices aside and realizing the great potential of Elon Musk's SpaceX. In 2011, NASA ended its space shuttle program with high costs, slow turnaround, and safety problems that led to the fatal Challenger and Columbia disasters among factors for its demise. Since then, NASA has resorted to purchasing rocket trips to and from the ISS from Russia. Keen to restore spaceflight from U.S. soil, in 2014, NASA awarded two huge contracts worth a total of $6.8 billion to Boeing and SpaceX, with the aim of getting crewed to the ISS independently once again. When there was the beginning of the space cargo and crew programs, the two serious bidders were SpaceX and Boeing, and everybody poo-pooed SpaceX and said, oh, Boeing is a legacy company, Nelson said. Well, guess who's about to make its sixth flight after its first test flight with astronauts, and guess who's still on the ground? A fair burn to Boeing, which has in short been absolutely eating SpaceX's dust for over a decade. But it was a bit of a self-burn as well, seeing as how, by many accounts, Nelson himself was one of those early SpaceX poo-pooers. This isn't the first time that the head honcho over at NASA glossed over his history of SpaceX ambivalence. At his NASA nomination hearing back in 2021, Nelson argued that through a series of laws dating back to the mid-80s, he'd personally laid the foundation for the emergence of the modern commercial space sector. But according to colleagues and the U.S. Senate minutes, Nelson hasn't always been such a big fan of the privatized space travel industry or of the mercurial SpaceX CEO Elon Musk for that matter. Back in 2010, when Nelson was just a senator still, he was an extremely vocal opponent, or poo-pooer if you will, of a Senate push to fund commercial crew missions into the cosmos, as corroborated by allegations from former NASA's second-in-command Lori Garver in her recently published memoir. In that same memoir, Garver also claimed that Nelson once screamed at her to get your boy Elon in line. However, Nelson's efforts to save face aren't terribly surprising given SpaceX's prominent successes. SpaceX, which was founded in March of 2002 by Elon Musk, was on the verge of shutting down. Between 2006 and 2008, its first three rocket launch attempts all failed, putting it on the edge of bankruptcy. The fourth launch succeeded, but only after Musk scraped together just enough money to finance it. Musk had made a name for himself by voicing lofty ambitions for the company. He espoused self-landing, reusable, and most importantly, cheap rockets, and a wider goal of enabling humanity to become a multi-planetary species by colonizing Mars. In 2012, SpaceX launched its first cargo delivery to the ISS, and in 2014, it was co-awarded the aforementioned NASA contract with NASA's commercial crew program manager, Kathy Luters, telling reporters, Boeing and SpaceX proposed the value within which they were able to do the work and the government accepted that. In May of 2022, SpaceX was valued at $127 billion. Its Starlink network of thousands of internet satellites is well underway with over 3,000 in orbit. On August 30th, it launched its 39th Falcon 9 rocket of 2022, the company's workhorse reusable launch vehicle, on a mission to deliver a batch of 46 Starlink satellites into space. Back in April of 2021, NASA tasked SpaceX with developing one of the most crucial aspects of the Artemis III mission to return American astronauts to the moon for the first time in over half a century, the Human Landing System. This is the spacecraft that will lower humans to the lunar surface, while NASA's Orion capsule remains in orbit around the moon. 
Orion, which was developed at a cost of $20.4 billion, is NASA's next-generation human spaceflight capsule. The plan for Artemis 3 is for SpaceX's huge upcoming Starship rocket and Orion to rendezvous in orbit around the moon. Two astronauts from the four-person crew will then transfer to Starship and descend to the lunar surface. Once they're finished, Starship will launch the two astronauts back into orbit where they will transfer back into Orion and travel home. SpaceX must keep in step with NASA and develop Starship from a rocket that has not yet flown into one that must be capable of supporting human crew and carrying out a lunar landing. And now, according to the latest update from Nelson, SpaceX is on track to achieve it. NASA was hoping to launch its huge space launch system rocket, the backbone of the Artemis program, on a test flight called Artemis 1 on September 3rd. But technical faults delayed that attempt as well as the previous one. It's unclear when the space agency will attempt another launch. If successful, the launch will mark the start of the Artemis program, which aims to return humans to the moon by 2025 with the help of private companies like SpaceX. NASA has spent 12 years and 23 billion US dollars developing SLS alone. And that's not taking into account the Orion capsule. In contrast, SpaceX developed Starship so fast that it went from blowing up steel prototypes in 2020 to being just weeks away from an orbital flight, potentially before 2023. Additionally, SpaceX says that when Starship does fly, it will be significantly more powerful than the SLS, producing a claimed 17 million pounds of thrust to the SLS's 9.5 million. Nelson says he does not see this as a threat. The fact is, we've got a rocket that is human rated, he said. I'm a huge fan of what these commercial companies not only have done, but will do. SpaceX has been very successful in getting Starship ready. But Starship goes to the moon, and it's got to rendezvous in lunar polar orbit with Orion, and the crew transfer, and go down and come back up. But Starship is not capable, at that point, of getting back to Earth. Only Orion is capable of getting back to Earth. And that's about it for today's episode. Thank you so much for watching, and if you enjoy what my team and I are doing, you can become a patron through our Patreon link in the description below. Otherwise, as always, this is Kevin with Great SpaceX, and my team and I will see you next time.